After applying to over 75 jobs, finally one was the right fit and I launched my career in 2012 in Chicago. I was super excited about everything. I got the job because I was friends with two guys who already worked there. It was an ITS firm, Intelligent Transportation Systems, and I was hired to be the new engineer who had boots on the ground for a project in Chicago, even though the technical expertise to work on that project and manage it sat in Vancouver, British Columbia, this powerhouse house modeling team. The project I was hired to work on could potentially revolutionize transportation in Chicago. At the time, the airport there, O'Hare, was the second busiest airport in the country, managing 32 million passenger trips per year. And many people would travel the 18 mile corridor between O'Hare and the downtown city center called The Loop. And even though it's not that far, this 18 mile corridor can be excruciatingly bad and filled with congested traffic. Stakeholders were looking for solutions to this problem and they were considering a system called a managed lane to be built into the corridor. A managed lane or a hot lane is a system where certain vehicles can be excluded from the congested traffic in order to have easier access to the city center and a much faster trip. Vehicles that could be eligible are buses, transit systems, or you could pay. Quick lesson here, things are always better for you if you can pay extra. And Chicago wanted to make sure that this system was good enough to build the infrastructure so they hired my engineering company to conduct the study. So as I got started on this project, everything was going fine. Step one is to build an existing condition scenario such that it is like today, how things are right now so that you can use that to experiment with later. We call this the base model. This involves building a massive micro simulation model in a software suite called Vism, which theoretically sounds pretty cool. But as an engineer who day by day needs to build the thing, it was not always the case. Micro simulation involves every single detail down to the per second accuracy of traffic signal timings and every vehicle is actually in the model. You can even see the turn signals of each and every car inside the model. And because of the nature of micro simulation, each and every little thing has an impact. You start off by building the skeleton of the roadway and so we would have to import Google Maps screenshots and project them properly and fix them in the world, scale them appropriately, and sometimes they wouldn't even be in the right coordinate system. We could spend an entire day troubleshooting something and not make any progress on this project. It was great. It was super frustrating sometimes, and that's just the beginning. This iterative process is very common in engineering in general, and it's tedious and frustrating and monotonous. And despite being able to play foosball at lunch every day and liking my colleagues, carpooling with my roommate, having a girlfriend in the city, and a pretty good social life, ultimately, I started to dislike my job. And I distinctly have this memory about six months into this role where I just questioned it. And I thought, wow, this really isn't the right position for me and the right job for me. And I started to get a little bit depressed and really disliked my situation there. I questioned my entire career. And I hear a lot of stories from engineers or engineering students who have a similar situation for their student journey or their early career approach. They share this feeling. But it was really important to me to at least hit the one year anniversary and ideally hit the two year mark for this first job. So I kept showing up, I kept a positive attitude and I just did the work and kept up with the routine. And then one day, my boss's boss stopped me in the hallway and asked me a couple questions about the project and had some level of interest in me that was rare. I had never seen this before. Before. And after the conversation, we parted ways, I started to go back to my desk, and he reaches over and says, Hey, Jake, do you want to go to Vancouver? And I remember not really knowing what this meant or what he was suggesting, but quickly saying like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. It turns out that the project timeline had been accelerated, and in order to hit the targets of the schedule, we had to make some drastic changes. They considered hiring another junior engineer in order to hit these new scheduling targets, but ultimately the conversation steered into potentially me going there for five weeks, working 60, 70 hour days with the team in order to hit this new aggressive schedule, to hit these targets, make the clients happy, and actually deliver. This is what's cool about private sector. Sometimes projects get crazy and engineering teams need to figure out how to make it happen. I wasn't entirely sure how I felt about this situation. It was an interesting proposal. I talked to my girlfriend at the time who seemed pretty bummed about it to be honest and I had a pretty nice little life carved out in Chicago. I had been there for 
a year and a half or so and enjoyed all the social activities with my roommate Andrew, awesome guy. And it was summertime in one of the biggest cities in America. And there was a lot to miss out on if you're gonna leave for five weeks. And looking back, I can see how a lot of people would have seen this situation and been entirely unsure and may have passed on the opportunity. But I didn't, I went, I said yes. And this situation ultimately changed my life, changed my whole career. When I arrived, my team lead, Matthew Chan, who is an awesome guy, picked me up from the airport, took me out to sushi, him and his wife Nadine showed me all around the city. And at the time, I didn't really appreciate what was happening around me, but it was a great opportunity to be in a different place and work with a new team day by day. And it was a great situation that my company had presented me with. But at the same time, the five weeks was grueling. I lived in a hotel, the Holiday Inn Express. I ate hotel buffet breakfast for five weeks, wasn't able to cook, just had a little mini fridge. I would stock up on bananas and yogurt just to have some snacks and save money. And we worked our butts off. I worked weekends, I worked nights. We really did do 60, 70 hour weeks, but the trip came to a close. We hit our targets and I went back to Chicago. And if you fast forward a year later, the situation happened again, only this time they weren't asking for a simple five week trip, which goes by in a flash, but this time eight months. Do you think that they would have asked me about this eight month assignment if I had said no to the five weeks? Absolutely not. The opportunity would have gone to someone else. This time I was a little smarter. I was able to negotiate a higher salary. They put me up in a fancy condo for that entire eight month period. And again, the situation turned out to be a very good one for myself personally and my engineering career. And at the end of the eight month assignment this time, there was this moment of, do I stay or do I go? Again, I had carved out this nice little life. I was I was dating a new girl and I had plenty of friends in Vancouver and a nice situation there. I got to eat lunch with Grant Waldy every day, which is always awesome. And ultimately they asked me to stay in Vancouver, which lasted me being there nearly four years. I ultimately hit the five year anniversary with this company. And on my own terms, a few years ago when I turned 30, I moved back to the East Coast to be closer to my family. And the whole situation turned out to be a pretty good launch to my engineering career. So what's the lesson here? Why did this relocation result in me hitting the five-year anniversary of my company, being reconnected to my job, and actually liking my role and my time and my day-by-day -day with the engineering firm. Because my work didn't change being in Vancouver. I was working on the same project with the same people and the same software. And ultimately, it actually got more intense, more extreme, more monotonous. So what happened? Why did this occur? The overarching lesson here that I want you to take away is to say yes to opportunities and figure them out along the way. You don't always have to know how to execute something, but say yes, especially when you're in the early phases of your career, say yes and figure it out along the way. Me and that girlfriend in Chicago, we did break up. And my roommate, Andrew, who I now had to find some random subletter to share an apartment with him, he was upset about it. And our relationship was weird for several years. And sometimes I did end up missing the Chicago life that I had built. But what happened in Vancouver is that I understood that they valued me, that my work and my effort mattered. I no longer was showing up just to click things in some software ecosystem or build a model. There was a real world application to my efforts. And being there, working with the team, seeing the project in a different way made me feel like I had an impact. So you may be asking yourself, well, what if I don't get to some opportunity to relocate or work on a special project? What if I don't see the impact in my job? And what if I don't really feel appreciated and valued within my career? Well, I have three things for you to consider. One, you can ask for more opportunity. This is exactly what companies and bosses want. Show up every day trying to prove yourself. Be so good that they cannot ignore you. And then when opportunities do arise, your bosses and team leads will think of you first. They may even try to find excuses to give you more roles and more tasks and more responsibility just because they know you want it. But you have to ask for it. Ask for nothing and usually you get nothing. Well, what about the impact of your work? This is a little bit more of an internal element. Maybe your company isn't working on something that is as world changing as a SpaceX project or working for Google, but chances are in your engineering role, you are working on something that a lot of people use and may impact a lot of lives or has some sort of ability to integrate into the world. But chances are the case is that your day by day efforts do matter for people. Again, ultimately my job was clicking lines and building something in some software suite. And, but if that was the perspective that I wanted to take, I would never be able to see that I was helping plan 
man, this major infrastructure project that impacted millions of people. And if I were to look at it this way, I would feel a lot better, a lot more valuable, and a lot more impactful in my role and in my day-by-day -day engineering career. And what if you ask for more opportunity and you bring up impact and try to have these conversations with your boss and you do this for a while and you're still not getting more responsibilities and you don't really feel like you're valued and appreciated, well then maybe it's time for you to look for another job. And on this channel, we have plenty of videos about that. Thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys. If you're into engineering and career success, then make sure you subscribe.